Hey, data fans, Reed here. Today, I have some exciting updates for the tool that I've been building for analytic endeavors. So looking in front of us here, you might remember that the tool originally just had a report merger, and I've decided to turn this into more of a multi-tool as I continue to find cool things that I like to develop that will help you hopefully save a bit of time. So I've also built a layout optimizer and even an advanced page copier that copies pages with their corresponding bookmarks. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty and the details, I'll walk us through all of this and essentially show you how the tool works and the, the overall goal of each of these two new tools as I continue to, over the next few months, probably continue to add to this and iteratively grow this. So with that being said, let's hop into Power BI and get started. All right, the first thing that I want to review is the layout optimizer. Now, as the name implies, this will optimize the layout of your Power BI desktop file. Specifically, coming over to Power BI desktop, that all table section that's in here that's auto arranged for you, that is somewhat of a nightmare sometimes to actually arrange individually. Yes, you can create your own individual layouts down here, but I would like a way for the default layout, at least for now, to auto arrange it into a specific design. So coming back to the tool, I have the file PVIP location in here. Basically, it just asks you the folder location of wherever your PVIP file is, which it does require, by the way, for this. They're much easier to work to than PBXs. So today, that's the only support that I'm willing to put the time and investment into. I'm going to select Analyze. It basically going to go through it. It has a calculator that will uh, actually give a quality score, have a table categorization, and it will actually tell you it found a series of fact tables, dimension tables, uh, parameters, and everything else. And when you click optimize, it will save to uh, the PVIP in the layout JSON file that organizes everything for you. So let me show you what the output of this looks like had I clicked this button and uh, process this into the PVIP. So this is the design that it came out in. Now, it's referred to what I like to call as kind of the middle out design for this, where we have our fact tables in here right in the middle that you can see uh, where it will stack them together and then it will branch out via how many layers in your star scheme it has identified in terms of relationship paths outwards. So we have all of the fact tables here. In this case, this model has a lot of them. Uh, I've obfuscated the column names for some interesting space stuff just to keep it anonymous from a client model that I had worked on and gotten rid of all the data, but otherwise, we have our fact tables there. We have our calendar tables automatically organized at the top. We have any special calendar tables that get organized above that. So like a special date selection table that you might have. And then it will branch it out into your level one, two, and three, depending on how much of a star versus a snowflake schema you have. And it will stop at four. I've ha I don't want to have it go too far wide. So anything that's past four in what identifies as a relationship chain will automatically just get grouped into the level four category. But you can also see that it actually manages to organize them in a position in each of their stacks to minimize the relationship overlaps as well. So it, it's one of the cleanest things that I've uh, managed to see. And I love that it does this and everything is pixel perfect for this. And if you have special disconnected tables, you will get a section for a measures table over here um, on the right, and also your parameter and any just special disconnected tables that have no relationships will get stacked into a grid on the right. But I think you can fairly universally agree that this looks a lot better than what we had initially that just comes out of the box with Power BI. This is the way I like to design it. Um, I might add some feature releases where you can choose the layout you would like to auto-optimize, but at least for now, it's going to auto-optimize your main one and put it into this structure. Um, so feel free to use it at your will, but I think this goes a long way to really help to explain relationship paths and uh, just do a nice little bit of house cleanup for you for that. All right, now let's go to the next thing, which is the advanced page copy. All right, so advanced page copy. As the name implies, it is a better version of the right-click duplicate of a page in Power BI. The big thing that I want to mention on this is that it copies the page and the associated bookmarks. So you get a second set of bookmarks in the page when you copy it, which does not natively happen in Power BI. I had so many times where I wanted a new page or something with the same set of bookmarks and visuals, but just a bit of tweaks, and this will do that for you. So. Again, just navigating to the project file in your folder path here or the browse option, click analyze. It will then find your pages that have bookmarks. You select that, select execute copy, and it will copy that page and basically save it to the PVIP file. So again, I've already done this on a copy of this one. So let's go ahead, hop into Power BI and see what the copied effect looked like. So this is the report after I click execute copy. And so we see down here at the bottom, there's a report and there's a report copy. 
So it basically duplicated my page and it duplicated all of the bookmarks related to it. So I had four bookmarks initially, a filter bookmark, clear all bookmark, hide and show. So four bookmarks in total that was on the original page. And now I have a new set of these that works on page two. Now, the interesting thing with the way that this actually copied the page out is technically these bookmarks work on both pages. So the only thing that's restricting them to the to working on only one of the pages is, is if you have current page turned on. So technically, on either of these, hide and show visual works here. Hide and show visual works here as well, unless you turned on current page, at which point it's going to make sure that it's going to take you to the copied page of the original. But the implications behind this is the way that it actually worked is it has given me an idea for a future update where I might actually use this to be able to universally copy like a bookmark page pop out across all pages. So maybe something in a future update. So it's depending on how you think about it, this is either a bug or a feature that these bookmarks work now on both pages, either set of them. Um, but you at least get two pages, two sets of bookmarks, and each set will work on its respective page, depending on how it's being configured. So another useful thing that I wanted to do, and again, came from hassles and client scenarios where pages needed to be duplicated. I didn't want to have to go through and reproduce all the bookmarks again. Um, but overall, it's something that's built into the external tools option. You'll have an option to download this directly from our, our website and or GitHub. But it's a tool that I really enjoy building and I'm having fun adding all these small little parts and pieces to it as I continue to find things that I think would be useful to develop and design for the community. Um, but as always, uh, feel free to test this out. Report any bugs if you see this, of course, in the GitHub repository. But otherwise, all the links and associated information are going to be found down below. Um, any comments and suggestions, of course, uh, feel free to, to drop them in um, for future videos as well. But otherwise, check out some of our related content here in the upper left. As always, liking, commenting, and subscribing will help this channel grow and get the tool more exposure. So with that, I'll see you all in my next video.